Hello lovely kittens, we are kicking off your chemistry here with one of my favourite, favourite topics. This covers the fundamentals of chemistry, all the different states, what's going on in all the different sections. If you want to follow along, make sure you don't miss anything out, you can get the free vision guide which is over on my website. Solids have a very, very fixed structure. That atoms may wiggle a little bit, but it is around a fixed point. There is going to be some movement and some vibration, but they are not flowing at all, and they can't be compressed. Liquids have much more movement around, but they are not in a fixed position. They can flow, but they can't be compressed. Gases are very, very free to move. There's lots of movement going on in here. It is not around a fixed position. They do a lot of moving. They can flow and they can be compressed. Going from a solid to a liquid is melting, from a liquid to a gas is evaporating. Going in this direction, we are putting energy in. Going in the other direction, energy is coming out. So from gas to a liquid, it is condensing. From a liquid to a solid, we are freezing. A compound has a melting point of 19 degrees. Melting point and a boiling point of 74. Boiling point, what is the state at room temperature? Room temperature is about 25, 27. So, when it boils, it turns from a liquid into a gas. So above there, it is going to be a gas. And below there, it is going to be a liquid. Melting point, we are turning from a solid. So this way is going to be a solid and above there is going to be a liquid. So at room temperature it's going to be a liquid. Now the other important thing to remember about boiling point and um, melting point is that the opposite is the same number. So boiling point is equal to condensing point. And melting point is equal to freezing point. We just talk about boiling point and melting point instead of condensing point and freezing point. They are exactly the same number. So if the boiling point is 74, the condensing point is 74. If the melting point is 19, the freezing point is 19. State symbols tell us what state something it's in. So an S is a solid. L is liquid. AQ is aqueous and G is gas. If you see state symbols in an equation, the answer generally refers to them. If you see something that's liquid and liquid or aqueous and aqueous going to a solid, it is going to turn cloudy. If you have a liquid and a solid or a liquid and liquid and a gas is produced, you are going to see bubbles or a loss of mass bubbles or fizzing. Elements, pure things, compounds, two or more different things chemically bonded together, mixture, lots of different things, some of them chemically bonded, some of them not. If you have a pure substance, it is going to melt at its melting point. If you have a mixture, it is going to melt over a range of melting points. We can test this by getting some crystals of the pure solution into a very, very thin tube. Putting it into a rather old-fashioned here melting point apparatus, you can see that the ends of the very, very thin tube have the crystals in, so we can see that happening. And then they go in the top of the melting point apparatus. And as the temperature rises, this is slowly heated up. We can have a look through the little glass window and see if the um, substance melts at one temperature or whether it melts slowly over a range of temperatures. We can use chromatography to separate out compounds and you're going to get probably what you did in class is beautiful, beautiful um, separations by uh, felt pen. We need to make sure that the end of the paper is just in the water and that you've drawn your start line in pencil. If you draw it in pen, then your start line is going to run as well and that is going to cause you problems. We're going to put a lid on here to stop the solvent evaporating. When we want to work out RF value, we do the distance moved by the spot divided by the distance moved by the solvent. When you have mixtures and you want to separate them, there are a number of different things you can do. 
distillation where you're going to separate things off by boiling points, so things that have um, a different boiling point will distill at different temperatures. Evaporation where we are going to remove the liquid and leave solids that have been dissolved in the liquid in the dish. Filtration where we have large particles of solid in the liquid. The particles of solid will stay in the filter paper and the liquid will drip through. And fractional distillation where you can take things off at different boiling points. We would not survive very long without water. But only a small percent of the water on earth is suitable for us to drink. So we need to remove salts from it. Which is desalination. And we need to make it safe to drink. Or portable water. To make water safe to drink, we need to remove any um, dirt, mud in there, so any large solids. We need to remove the bacteria. And we need to remove any nasty or unwanted bits of um, too many mineral ions, like the salt that would be in seawater. We add in various different things to water. We add in chlorine to kill things and we add in fluoride for tooth protection and bone protection.